We're going to cover a lot of information tonight. Now, the nice part is, for example, if you do have any questions, what you can do is if you uh, down in the chat and put some questions in, our moderator will give them to us. Okay. Now, the one thing is this. This webinar tonight, what we're going to do is this. We're going to cover a lot of great information, but I'm not going to be able to cover everything in one hour. Okay. This also, too, will be sent to you. Okay. So you can watch and listen to this over and over and over. Then we'll actually have another part two of this and probably a part three, and we'll always be adding on to this. So all of you guys that are on tonight have the benefit of asking questions at the end. So if you come up with a question, type it in. And if I, if I can actually cover it during the process of actually uh, uh, covering that section, I will. But then what will also happen is this. At the end, I will be going through those questions. And then, for example, if I think it's going to be a long-term question, I will actually email you the answer. So I said that's the benefit of some of you get from being on here live. Now, let's get started. And I want to explain to you who I am and, and what we actually do. Now, very simply is this. This is me, okay? Uh, my name is Dr. Patrick Flynn. Um, I've been in practice since 2000. It's kind of nice. I started practice, you know, right out of school after my long, extensive education. My background's in nutrition. My background's in chiropractic. My background's in naturopathic. And what I did, for example, I took all the education I I got not just one education but multiple educations and create a very unique process of practice that way. And that's why tonight I'm going to give you a very different look when it comes to female hormones. Some of the stuff that you're going to understand, some of the just from knowing certain hormones that way, but I'm going to give you a different perspective on it. Okay? Um, I've been blessed to actually teach this and other things to and consult doctors from all over the country. Uh, no joke, the most, uh, as you can see, I've been on many nat national uh, radio shows dealing with majorly female hormone issues. Now, there is some guys on here. Now, you say, well, what are, what are guys doing on here? Well, because guess what happens is male and female hormones, guys, are both the same. It's just a matter of what? It's just a matter that we have less estrogen and progesterone than you do. We have more testosterone. Vice versa, you have more of the other hormones. But we all have the same hormones, they're just at different amounts. So this is a very applicable to also men too. Now, as you can see, you know, I consult for different other things like a psychiatric hospitals. And the, the primary thing that I see all day long is female hormone levels, okay? And also psychiatric problems because they're both related and I'm going to go through that tonight. Now, once again, this is a very dear topic to me because I believe that um, female hormone and female hormone problems are at an all-time high. Okay, I mean, droves of women from all over the country come in here to find that balance. And if we can help them, God bless, we see some wonderful change in them, some recovery, some major illnesses. And the nice part is this, it's all about balancing those female hormones. Because the sad part is this, when we look at what's out there today, it's kind of scary. Now, for example, I'm going to start with this. If we take a look, for example, of some of the things that we see today in, in our um, TV and our radio, we notice a lot of things. Now, this was actually an article that was brought in, um, to me by my mother, and she it was paging through a health magazine, and all she sa saw this article, health hotline, sick of your period, get rid of it. Now, if you can see on here, it's kind of interesting. They talk about just even the first term. It's uh, the first paragraph. It says, for years, you've been told that your period is a blessing in disguise, a necessary evil. You've always suspected that that's a bill of goods. And now doctors have finally agreed. Periods, it turns out, are optional. And, of course, they put right after it with the help of birth control pills. Now, the think about this. They're trying to tell people that cycles are optional. Now, the sad part is this. The reason why it has become this way and the reason why women have been sick of their period is quite simple. If I say to you that you're going to get your menstrual cycle or women, for example, if I say to you you're going to go into menopause or you're in menopause, that has a very negative connotation. Well, it does because a normal process, now let me say it again, guys, and ladies, excuse me, ladies, let me say it this again. It's a normal process. Every woman, with the exception if she has some debilitating disease or have had a hysterectomy, is going to get a cycle and is going to go through menopause, okay? So the idea is this. How can these normal things start to become what? As they treat them as diseases. We don't want these. And women say, well, doc, I don't really know what to do. Well, the one thing is, one thing I love about this slide, this is female hormones. This is all health care. Do you ever notice that, for example, let's say that you suffer some something, and let's say, uh, I'll just give an example of a woman I've just recently dealt with, a woman that has fibrocystic breast disease. 
okay? You can even Google it, learn a lot about it, and they will tell you and you'll see so many things. So as you see this kind of guy's like, listen, where do I go? What do I do? And, and someone tells me this helps and someone tells me this helps and my doctor tells me to do this and another person that suffers with it tells me to do this and you're very confused. So tonight what we're going to do is we're going to start to create that roadmap for you. And we're going to, by doing that, is we're going to actually accomplish our goal. Okay? So here's our goals for tonight. These are what the major things I want to cover in this part one. Now, during part one, you're going to get a lot of great information. But we actually want to cover these certain goals. Number one, I have to teach you a different paradigm of healthcare. This. Now, why? Because right now, ladies, if you haven't ever heard me speak or if you haven't ever heard me talk about female hormones or any condition, the thought process is that you go to choose your health care, for example, are in one venue. I'm going to teach you a difference in that. Number two, I want you to understand female hormones, how they work, and what happens if they come in balance. I am very, let's say, disenchanted with our healthcare system today that we don't teach women and other males and females how actually their hormones work. Ladies, let me ask you a question. If your hormones go off, let me ask you a question. Is it good? No, it's very disrupting. So why don't we teach you more about them that way? Number three, we we'll examine the tools and the testing available to address these hormone disorders. And number four, let's look at some things we can do naturally and food to help, you know, balance these female hormone disorders, okay? That's going to be our goal for tonight. We're going to go more extensively. So I'm, when, we, when this is sent out to you, we're going to set this as part one. Now, Durang, you can learn a ton from part one. We'll just go a little bit more in detail as the webinars go on. Okay, now here's one thing. When you ever look at female hormones, I always start out with this. <laughs> and I say, Doc, yeah, that's, that's kind of offensive. Why would you have a picture of a horse up there when we talk about female hormones? Well, once we accomplish our goals, this is the way the current healthcare system looks at female hormones. And I say, okay, Doc, you went overboard a little bit. Really? Then I want you to do is this. For any woman that may be on this that suffers, from, uh, suffers in menopause that way, and you're taking some form of uh, hormone for menopause, guess where they get that hormone from? Here, the most common hormone given out today it's called Premarin. Do you know why it's called Premarin? It stands for primary urine. Now think about that. You get a pregnant horse urine hormones. Now I know that's kind of disgusting, and here's the one thing is this. You can look that up. You can look where they get it from. They extract it from horse urine, pull out the hormones, and guess what happens? This is what they inject or this is what they give you to take. That's very sad. It's very scary when you think about it. So in our current healthcare system today, we're taking something as a horse hormone, putting it into females and expecting them to get better. Now, here's one thing. Doctors, a lot of people say, well, Doc, wait, I feel better when I take it. Well, of course you do. Your body will use whatever it can to try to balance things out. But it doesn't mean it's good for you that way. And when I look at this picture, this is a pretty horse, but I still haven't seen any relationship to this horse to any woman I've seen in my office. Now, once again, it's a stupid joke trying to say, listen, how can they take this and convert into the things that we do today? So we really need a different paradigm of health. Now, here's one thing. You say, Doc, what does a paradigm mean? It's how we think. And when we think differently and ask different questions, we are now available to find out different methods of doing things. Now, so here's our big goal. Let's understand and let's create a new paradigm of healthcare. So what is it? Well, guys, I love an example, for example, that actually gives me a very good detailed look at the way our healthcare system is today. And we're going to call that the fire department, excuse me, the fireman and carpenter principle. Let's say that you get home tonight, or wait, you are home. <laughs> I'm so used to lecturing. Here we go. Let's say that all of a sudden that you're on this webinar, and all of a sudden, guess what? Your house catches on fire. Let me ask you a question. This is your house. Who would you call? You'd immediately call 911. Now, I've got a question for you guys. Why wouldn't you call your dentist? I go, well, Doc, that's a dumb question. Why would I call my dentist? Well, you wouldn't call your dentist because he doesn't have the right education and the right tools. He has a hose, but guess what? It's not big enough to put out the fire. No, it's pretty obvious. You're going to call the fire department. You're going to call them because they do have the right education. They do have the right tools. They have an ax and a hose to put out the fire. Now, they're going to come to your house after calling them one, and they're going to do what? They're going to jump out of the fire truck, and the first guy is going to jump out with an ax. He's going to walk up to your door. He's going to walk up to your window, and he's going to smash it down. The second guy, as you can see in our little picture here, the firefighter here, is going to grab his hose, he's going to run into the house, and he's going to start spraying all the house down. 
Now, let me ask you guys a question. When the firefighter is spraying the walls of your house, okay, he's trying to put out the fire. But when he sprays the walls, is it good for the walls? No. Is it good for the carpet? Nope. It's not good for any of those venues. The fire department has actually been there now for about 15 minutes, and what have they done to your house? They've actually caused a lot of destruction. But you stand there grateful. And I say, well, why? Because you stand there grateful because they're trying to accomplish one thing. And the one thing to accomplish is what? Stop the whole house from burning down. Because if they do that, for example, it's much easier and cheaper to rebuild the house than trying to start all over and scratch and lose all your belongings. Okay? So now, let's say the fire department did a great job and they put out the fire. And that's, their, that's what they're trained for. When they are done with their putting out the fire, would you ever ask them to stay around and help you rebuild the house with the tools they have? No, that's a dumb example. Why? No more than the dentist can actually put out the fire can a fired fighter rebuild the house with his tools. See, so for example is this. Let's say all of a sudden this is your house. It's left over. The firefighter is standing there saying, man, I did a good job, didn't I? Because why? He stopped the whole house from rearing down. But you can't live in there, guys. You can't. It's very toxic in there. It can cause you a lot of problems. So what we want to do is this. We want to start to rebuild that house. But obviously we can't do it from axes and hoses. So what do we got to do? We got to call who? We got to call our carpenter. Now the carpenter, what he's going to do is this. As you can see, he has different materials. He has a different education. Now the fire fire, when they got down and put on the fire, they said, man, I did a great job. I know exactly what I'm doing. This is wonderful. Now the carpenter, he's going to walk in that same exact house, and what's he going to think? Holy mackerel. Holy mackerel. I cannot believe um, that this house is the way it is. We have to bring in raw material. I have to bring in lumber. I have to rip out the walls and carpets and help to rebuild that house back up. Now, if you look, what happens is this. They both have a job, but guess what? It's two totally different jobs. One's there to address the fire when it's bad. One's there to rebuild the house. Now, if you understand the fireman and carpenter principle, you'll understand all of healthcare, and that will lead us into female hormones. Now, imagine that somebody that you know has a heart attack or stroke. Let me ask you a question. You're going to call 911. They're going to go to the hospital. Let's call them actually the fire department. Okay? The fire department, for example, is, is our metaphor for the medical profession. Now, so let's say they rush them to the hospital because you called 911. They're going to use their axes and hoses to help save their life, to help their house from not burning down. Okay? So they're going to do what? They're going to put that hose into their arm, and they're going to start pumping that medication into your friend or your family member's arm. Now, question for you. When they start doing that, is that good for his body? Now, a lot of people say, yeah, doc, it is. No, 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 listen, I'm not asking if it saved his life. I'm asking if is it, is it good for his body. So no, it's not, because why? Just as you spray water on the walls, it may put up the fire, but destroys your walls in the process. Now, let's say that the medication did not stop them from dying from a heart attack or stroke. They only have one tool left. They have their ax or surgeries. Now, can a person die from a surgery? Absolutely they can. But can you agree with me on this part? Number one, if a person has something severe, as we call a fire, okay, would you agree with me that you may need drugs or surgery to stay alive? No one on this phone call from all over the country is going to disagree with that principle. Why? Because that's what their job is. It's for what? To have a safe venue where people can go if there's something severe. Okay? That even happens in female hormones. If you end up with a major cancer and you're going to die, guess what? You may need drugs or surgery to stay alive. You may need medication to stop you from progressing really badly. But my question is this. Once they get you stable, just like when they pull out the fire, do they ever sit there and go, here's what's going on, let's test things properly, let's find out where things come from, and let's rebuild your house so you get rid of these problems? No. Guys, listen, you're going to get the carpenter perspective on hormones tonight, and it's very different. It's very different. Because why? Because when we look at it differently and start asking different questions, we get different answers. Now, one of the major principles that you have to understand, and this is key, the next principle is key to understanding female hormones different than everybody else. Let me explain why. If a woman has a female hormone problem, they usually send them to an OB, okay? And they'll do what? They'll examine their ovaries, they'll examine their uterus, they'll do uh, pelvic CTs, they'll do all these imaging, and then they usually sell, use some medication for them to try to balance things out that way. Now, the one thing why that is a false principle to live on is this, and you have to understand right here, my Swiss watch principle. Now, imagine, for example, that you look at those gears. Let's say that smallest gear stops working. Guess what happens? It affects the whole watch. But when you look at the watch, you never just look at what? One gear. 
because looking at one gear makes no sense. Because as you can see on this webinar, as that gear spins by itself, it has no nothing and doesn't activate with anything else. Guess what? A watch doesn't work that way, and neither does our body. Our body is actually what? Our body's more like this. Our body is what? Is a multiple gear system that can connect back and forth and affect each other. So you're telling me as you see the big circle in the middle, the big gear, that the nervous system can affect all those systems. Yes, it can. But as you can see, all those other gears can affect each other gear. Now, why is that significant? Let's look at the major endocrine, a.k.a. hormonal organs we have. Okay? Now, this is where it applies to both of us. This is where it applies to both male and female hormones. Now, the one thing, the one first principle I want you guys to understand is that if you don't look at all of the endocrine glands, all of the hormonal organs that produce hormones, you'll never understand female hormones or even male hormones. You say, why? Because as you can see at the bottom here, and I'm going to use my little point here, it's very important in our, in our hormonal work, male or female, to look at the ovaries and uterus and look at the testicles. Okay? Why? Because they produce a lot of the hormones. But as you can come way up here, you can see there's a thyroid gland. You can see a thymus. You can see the neurological, the pituitary. You can actually see the what? Adrenal glands. See, guys, right here, these adrenal glands? Remember these. We're going to talk about these extensively tonight. The adrenal glands, they sit on top of the kidney. All of these organs are actually hormonal organs. They do what? They actually do and produce hormones that have what? An effect in the Swiss watch principle of doing what? Of affecting all the glands. Now, let me say it again. If your thyroid goes off, guess what happens? It affects your ovaries. If, you're, if you're, for example, your adrenals don't work, it affects your ovaries. See, and this is the biggest problem that happens in female hormones. They look, they're so specialized in what they do, they forget about all the rest of the body parts. Now think about that. That's very devastating when it comes to female hormones, because let me show you. These are all your major hormones for your cycle. Now let me say it again, ladies. These are all of your major hormones for your cycle. Now you see on there, progesterone and estrogen are very important, but there's many other hormones that affect that. Now think about that. So if we don't evaluate all of these, guess what happens? We miss the boat. We, most, we miss the boat big time. Why? Because we can never truly find out where the hormonal problem came from. It could have came from your thyroid. It could have came from your adrenals, your kidneys, your pituitary. It could have came from just the ovary itself. But unless you look at it from a multi-gear system, you'll never figure out where hormone problems come from that way. Now, tonight, guys, is this. When you look at these here, we're going to definitely cover the thyroid. We're going to cover cortisol. We're going to cover progesterone. We're going to cover testosterone and estrogen. We'll even touch on the other ones. But we're going to do serotonin, adrenaline, noradrenaline, norepinephrine, insulin, and vitamin D. We're going to actually do those in part two. The reason why is this. This is not a joke. I teach a, a, a long eight-hour seminar just on the hormones alone. I can teach you actually eight hours just on the thyroid itself. So we're going to be touching key points that are going to stimulate your brain to look at hormones different and even give you some testing and some things that can be done right away for people that are on here right now that may be suffering from hormone problems. So guys, let's get started. Let's get started and let's start with the systems that are going to be all the Swiss watch way of looking at things. Remember, you're going to get the carpenter Swiss watch principle. You're not going to get the fire department viewpoint. We're going to give you how to rebuild these systems and how to actually find out where those major problems are coming from, from a female hormone or even a male hormone standpoint. So now think about this. All these more major hormones have to work together to do this. Now you say, Doc, what's this? This is our menstrual cycle. <laughs> Wait, sorry. This is your menstrual cycle, ladies. I guess I get so used to talking about female hormones and just, you know, calling it myself that way. Now, as you can see on this picture right here, and I'm going to use my pointer. As you can see up here, this up here is the hormonal system that comes from the pituitary, a.k.a. the brain up here. Now, if you look, the hormones fluctuate. They go up, they peak, they come down. Now, this right here is the egg inside the ovary. As it starts to develop and mature, be released from the, from the uh, ovary and travel down, okay? This next line right here, <laughs> excuse me, you actually see estrogen and progesterone. If you see the red here, estrogen spikes up, it comes down and spikes up again, your progesterone. As you can see, and this is where it's kind of neat, if you look at all these gears that have to correlate together 
for you to actually have a normal menstrual cycle, it's mind-blowing, guys. It's absolutely mind-blowing. You have to understand this body is so amazing and what it can do and how it does it, but everything has to correlate right. And if one of those gears get thrown off, it affects all of this. And that's why when I deal with a lot of infertility, and when you look at the infertile aspects of women, sometimes what happens is this. Women can suffer from like PCOS, endometriosis that can affect it. But guess what? It could be a liver issue. It could be a thyroid issue. It could be a, just a pituitary issue. And that's why they can't get pregnant. That's why some of you guys, and I actually see some of you guys recognize our names on here. Actually, two of the people on here right now actually were, quote, infertile, but now have children after we've done care with them. Because why? And guess what? They were both different. But one of them on here actually had a hormonal problem related to her pituitary. Because they would look at her over his uterus and say, guess what? They look normal. And I know as far as women, they get very frustrated when they're told they're normal and they're still going through things. But what they mean by being normal is what? You have no pathology there. There's no disease. There's no fire there. Okay? So what I want you guys to understand is all these things have to correlate together. So let's really look at what hormones are. I always love defining things. I love defining things so we can understand them very well. Now, let's start with this. I always, you guys, you can always find this. I always pull off medical stuff, okay? Because why? Because once you understand, for example, what they, uh, what they look for, when you go to talk to other doctors besides me, guess what? You're going to find out that you know sometimes more than they do. They are taught treatment. They're taught to put out the fire. They're not taught all the normal physiology and how to get back to normal. But there's a couple of things I want you to see, guys, is this. And you can see my pointer up here. Hormones are body's chemical messengers. Think about that. When a hormone's released, it tells your body what to do. As you can see, growth and development, metabolism, sexual function, reproduction, mood, okay? Now, as you can see, look at this. Endocrine glands, hormone glands, which are special groups of cells that make hormones. The major endocrine glands are the pituitary, pineal gland, thymus, thyroid, adrenal glands, pancreas, additional, you know, there's additional ones too. Okay, so as you can see from this, even definition it gives you, these are all of our hormone-producing glands. But here's the part I like. Hormones are powerful. Look at this. Hormones are powerful. Okay, now what I want to go down is right here. Laboratory tests can measure the hormone levels in your blood, your urine, and your saliva. Now, that's very important because when we do certain testing, medical research says the best ways to measure certain hormones is through the blood, some are better through urine, and some are better through saliva, and we're going to cover some of them. Now, when you look at making a hormone, when hormones have to be produced, this is where one of the biggest health myths have ever come, and it's caused more female hormone problems than ever before, okay? Now, let's say, Doc, what are we talking about? The question is this. The first part, we've got to make sure we have enough hormone, so we need to build hormones. So, ladies, let me ask you a question, and it's going to pop up on the next slide. Okay, and our next slide, we're going to actually understand our steroid hormones. These are all our hormones that we need, male and female, to actually do the functions we need. But every hormone is made from one thing, ladies, and guess what? Where do you think it comes from? Cholesterol. Whoa, 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 wait, 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 doctor, no, cholesterol is bad for us. They give us cholesterol-lowering drugs. They give males cholesterol-lowering drugs. They now give females them. Well, because why? It's one of the biggest myths on the planet. Cholesterol does not cause heart disease, guys. Cholesterol is an essential fatty acid that we need, essential sterol. Because when actually, first of all, vitamin B connects with cholesterol, and then we get what? We get all of our other hormones. See, and what you can see here is this. When cholesterol is actually given to an organ, you produce this major, it's called the mother hormone, okay? It's called pregnenolone. Now, remember that, guys, because pregnenolone converts to all of our other hormones there. Now, let me say that again. Pregnenolone converts to all of our other hormones. It converts over here to progesterone. It converts over to DHEA. Um, it converts over to testosterone, our estrogens over here. But they all stem from cholesterol. So these fat-free diets, guys, have caused women so many female hormone problems. It's disgusting. Stop trying to reduce our cholesterol levels. So let's look, look at the steroid hormone pathway again. When an organ, let's say an ovary, an ovary needs to produce hormone, uh, cholesterol will go to travel in our blood, it will go to the ovary, will produce pregnenolone, and it will convert into our progesterone or other hormones that we need there. That's very important. Now, it's very important because here, when you look at the definition of cholesterol, look at it. It's the, lipid, the <laughs> lipidic um, waxy steroid found in cell membranes and transported in the blood plasma in all animals. It is an essential component of all cell membranes. Now, think about this. 
That's how we make tissue. That's how we make hormones. If you look below here, in addition, cholesterol is an important precursor molecule for biosynthesis of stomach acids, bile acids, liver acids, steroid hormones, and several fat-soluble vitamins like vitamin D. So when you look at these things, this is one of the biggest myths. So I want you to think differently, guys. I'm going to teach you like a carpenter. If you want to build the walls, you have to bring the lumber in. This is your lumber. You need good cholesterols in your diet that way. Okay. Now, there is a difference. You don't want trans fats, which are rotten lumber. You want your good, healthy cholesterols, and we're going to go through some of them. So I want to show you, and I want to go back to this slide right here. When the cholesterol goes into the organ, for example, pregnenolone is produced. So when we look at this, now ladies, let me see a question. How many of you guys here on this phone consult right now, on this webinar, have actually had these hormones tested, have had a cholesterol plan? I know some of you guys have. How many of you guys have actually then had your pregnenolone tested? Now, you say, Doc, you can test that? Yes. There is a motto that the Wellness Way stands for. Like I said, we have clinics all over the country. Now, I want you to think about this, guys, this. There is a motto I want you to say to any doctor anytime you go. This doesn't matter if you get something natural or get something medical. Our motto is this. We don't guess, we test. We don't guess, we test. I want to burn that into your head. We do not do anything with any female any child, any male, any grandparent, any person on this planet without some testing. Because guess what? If you go have lunch with your friend tomorrow and you ask her, for example, what her hormone levels are at or what her body needs, guess what? They have no clue. Only your body knows what you need. Everybody's different. Everybody has different hormone levels. So we have to do what? We want to measure to see where they're at. And as we do here, as we measure these people, here's what I want to show you. Here's a young lady, a 26-year-old young lady. Now, if we look down here, it might be a little hard to see, but what do we measure on her? Now, she came for me for infertility, and this is recent. As you can see, this blood work was just done this past month, okay, in November. Now, if you look, for example, this woman, God bless her, she's been suffering like crazy. She's been going through some devastating things and very frustrated, can't get pregnant, stuff like that. Well, look at this, guys. Look at her pregnenolone here, abnormally low, okay, abnormally low. Ranges range from 7 to 188. Now, think about that. You'd think that most people would fall within that range. But look at this young lady. And she's not that old, guys. She's very young. So when she tries to even make hormone levels, she can't, doesn't even have the raw material to build her walls. Remember, I'm always going to reference back to the carpenter example. So think about this. She's trying to build the, have the raw materials to build her hormones, and she can't even get off square one. She can't even frame her house. Okay? That's devastating. So that no matter what this woman takes, no matter what drug they give her, no matter what they do to try to force ovulation, there's no way that even if they forced ovulation that her body is going to want to get pregnant. Why? Because why would it try to build a body like a newborn baby when you don't even have certain hormone levels? That's pretty disgusting. And so they try to force the body to respond that way. Now, there is a different way to look at this. Now, you say, well, Doc, you know, what, what can drain those levels? Well, I want to give you our next slide. Let's go back to our steroid hormone pathway again. I want to teach you, for example, another pathway in that hormone. Now, every hormone starts out with cholesterol, and it goes to pregnenolone, as you can see. But if our stress pathway, so let me say that again. If our stress pathway, now, ladies, what causes stress? Okay, can stress be mental? Yes. So we're going to say, number one, stress can be mental. Let's call that a thought. So that's our first T. Next stress can be trauma, okay? If I actually have trauma to my body, it's a stressor. Next can be toxicity. So I want you to remember, guys, there's three things that cause stress to a human body. Thoughts, trauma, and toxins, okay? Now, it's very important when we get to the care of women to understand that. But when our stress hormones, remember we talked about cortisol? Our stress hormone cortisol, which is produced by our adrenal glands, for example, if we go through stressors, if we have a stressful day, Guess what happens? Guess what? We will use pregnenolone. So let me see a question. Let's go back to this young lady back here. If we look at her pregnenolone being low, guess what happens? She's trying to produce hormone through this pathway right here, trying to force it this way. But I want you to show you something. Her pathway is actually going this way, and you don't see it on this graph, because if you look, guess what? There's a whole other pathway down here, and that's our stress pathway. Now, let me go back to our original slide here. Now, i got to pause because I know you guys are just a little bit behind when it comes to the, the Internet. So I said just make sure that you have the screen up here. Now, if you look, as our stress pathway is activated, 
it will start to use these hormones and here's our stress hormone down below cortisol now why is cortisol important cortisol actually helps us regulate blood sugar and different things like that but here's what happens when we actually look at cortisol from a hormone standpoint we can measure that and that hormone uh, is called our circadian rhythm see people don't realize hormones dissipate several times per day that's why when you measure cortisol it can see okay listen as you can see in this graph here the blue line are actually where our normal reference ranges are the black line is where our patient this patient is at now as you can see they fall within roughly a little bit low here but roughly the cortisone or the cortisol circadian rhythm process that way and I say doc what does that mean that means their hormone their stress hormones are produced and they come out at the right time when we have a stressor though here's what happens the stressors start to cause it to go very elevated and then we can measure and see if they're under chronic stress now here's the bad part over time though it's just like a fuel tank any hormone will run out and you can measure these hormones and as you can see they'll be very low and that will cause what fatigue now guys if you're under chronic stress for a long time and your body starts to fatigue out guess what that's called chronic fatigue syndrome and it's all measurable but here's the big key guys is this chart right here if you understand this chart right here which you'll never be taught in any doctor office because they don't teach you the carpenter Swiss watch way of looking at it is this every hormone as you can see starts off as cholesterol it converts into pregnenolone but I want you to show you is this and watch my pointer this right here is one gear this right here is another gear see how they overlap and what hormone guys do they overlap with what hormone they overlap with progesterone now why is that significant let me erase that it's significant because this if a woman or a guy is under significant stress and watch my pointer that means this pathway is activated this gear is activated what that will now do it will cause a person to steal progesterone away from the female hormone cycle and go to produce our stress hormones ladies let me give you a real-life example have you ever had a woman stress out so much that they skipped or delayed their period yes you have and I say why doc why would your body do that well guess what I live in Green Bay Wisconsin I'm up here in my beautiful office right now and what when I came in when I came back I ran back home saw my wife saw my kids came back in here but when I got it back in the truck it was kind of cold so let's say it's about 20 degrees out there and if I strip everybody down naked and throw you outside in 20 degrees where does your body do what did your body do it actually gets cold and so it pulls it goes into stress and pulls the blood towards the core it does that to survive now if I stay out there long enough I lose my fingers and toes they say doc that's dumb why does the body do that it's protecting its vital organs it always does everything to survive so when your body as you can see here on the chart when your body is under high stress it says listen I don't care about a cycle I don't care about a cycle at all so what I'm going to do is survive the stressor so if your body is full of mental bad thoughts if your body is traumatic I mean in fact what remember one of my degrees I'm a chiropractor that's why for example when actually people can get adjusted and remove one of those stressors they actually get better hormone levels that's why when you eat better and you don't toxify yourself with non-organic products your body works better your liver works better you have less stress in your body less hormones are needed okay now that's significant because this this right here for example by definition and there's even a medical term for it it's called a pregnenolone steal why because the the pregnenolone instead of going this way on the pathway towards our good anabolic buildup hormones for our cycle goes this way and steals it towards what stress hormones now ladies as you know you don't want those stress hormones produced this for example guess what is actually one of our adrenal glands this is why our adrenal glands are called our stress organ because it produces cortisol now look at this ladies the adrenal glands contribute to 35 percent of your female hormones premenstrual and almost 50 percent postmenopausal so ladies think about that one-third of you if your cycle right now one-third of you if your cyclic woman is produced by the adrenal glands now imagine your adrenal glands instead of producing good progesterone for your cycle is producing cortisol and draining it away now ladies guess what when your ovaries and you just shut down your adrenals do what they kick up and they they actually start to compensate for loss now think about that so your, if your adrenals are fatigued so let's go back here if your adrenals are fatigued down that purple line down below and now you go into menopause how can you even keep up with demand you can't and that's why menopause can be so detrimental to a woman because why 
the organs the other years they're supposed to work a little bit more, spin a little harder, guess what? During menopause, aren't there. And that's, and that's why I said, guys, when you look at female hormones, if you get stuck looking at the ovaries and uterus, you're never going to figure out hormone patterns that way. You're never going to figure out why they're drained. Now, let me get back to here. Nope, let's talk about that. Let me go back to this original slide. Furthermore, as you can see in the second paragraph, without proper adrenal function, pregnancy cannot occur. Now, think about it again. Without adrenal function, that means if a woman is under high stress, good luck getting pregnant, okay? When you looked at that young lady that had low pregnant alone, she could have been stolen just from high stress levels that way. And if that levels don't get built back up, guess what happens? She'll never, ever be able to do, never be able to get pregnant because she can not even produce the hormones to get pregnant. Now, why is this significant on the third paragraph here? The adrenal glands are also a major control mechanism for the thyroid, and that leads us into this. We talked about our stress hormones, cortisol, but let's look at this. See, this, guys, is this. This is actually a PDR. A PDR stands for Physician's Death Reference. This is what every doctor has to have, and this is just an online version, but I want to show you something. A lot of you guys, for example, out there take some thyroid medication. Why? Because it doesn't work properly. But did you know, if you look down in the second box down here, you do not want to take thyroid hormones if, once again, your thyroid gland is overactive, if you've had a recent heart attack, or guys, I'm going to circle this right here, or what? If your adrenal glands are not making sufficient hormone. Now you say, well, why? Because you can't synthetically force another gear like the thyroid to work and the adrenals have a major effect on it, and force it to work more. Because if you don't have proper adrenal gland function, you will never have proper thyroid function. So let me ask you a question, guys. Can, th can stress affect your thyroid? Absolutely it can. Can thyroid affect your female hormones? Absolutely it can. See, what I want you guys to get the concept of in just this initial part, don't worry. I'm, like I showed you some testing that can be done. I'm going to show you more testing that can be done. But what I want you to understand is this. Get into your mind that all of these gears work together. I know I'm going to beat that into your head, but we're not taught that. That's why, for example, I believe that the teachings I'm doing are getting so popular based on one thing. It's appealing to the normal physiology of how the body works and how to recover from this. So now, excuse me, let's look at thyroid. This is a major organ I want you guys to understand. Just today, and I, and I won't use her last name, but her name was Patty. She came into my office today because she's had some major problems and she's had her thyroid tested for a long time and they told her it was normal. And then we properly tested it. And just I'm going to show you something coming up here very quickly. But I won't show you hers because I just had her test today, her test results. One of her values was supposed to be below 9. She was over 800. Wait, wait, wait. Let me say that again so you get that. One of her thyroid values were, it was supposed to be below 9 and it was over 800. And I'm going to show you what it was on the, on, not on her test but on a different test. But what I want to show you is this. But they always test her and tore her, her thyroid is normal. Why? Because they don't test it properly. And that's what we're going to get into. Now, look at what happens, ladies, with thyroid symptoms. Now, this is some of the biggest complaints I get from women. Now, think about it. They can't, they're, they can't lose weight. They got weight gain. They're fatigued. They have cold hands and feet. Their hair and skin becomes disrupted. They just have mental brain fog. They're depressed. They're going through constipation. Now, they're going through all these disorders. And my goodness, that's thyroid all over again. It affects your female hormone levels significantly. Now, this is your thyroid gland. It's in your neck. And as you can see, what it does, it releases hormones into your bloodstream that way. And once again, that's why a thyroid hormones are very good to measure in the blood. You can also measure them in the saliva. You can't measure them in the urine. See, the one thing about that cortisol test before, that was measured in the saliva. Now, as you can see, as this actually rotates, the brain, once again, uh, endocrine gland, the pituitary, releases a hormone and tells the thyroid to work. So as you can see what happens, it now starts to drop down, give a hormone TSH. All medical thyroid production is based on TSH. They do everything. That's usually the only lab they usually do. If you're lucky, you can get them to measure the hormones. Because why? See the hormones T4 and T3 coming out? I'm going to explain them in just a minute. But see, they base everything on TSH. They say, listen, if TSH is normal, the thyroid's normal. But as you can see, TSH is not made by the thyroid. TSH is made by the pituitary gland, a.k.a. an endocrine gland in the brain. So that once again, you have two gears here working for one organ to work. Now, here are the hormones for our thyroid. Now, there is more than this. I just want to show you these are the major ones they know about extensively. T4 and T3. Now, you also see our T3. Now, just to let you know, right there alone, when you're going to measure hormone levels, 
you want to measure your T4, your T3, and your RT3. Now let me explain what they are a little bit in detail. As you can see over here, the majority of our hormone produced by our thyroid is called T4. What does that stand for? That stands for a tyrosine molecule with four iodines. That's why you see the I here, the I here, the four iodines, and this is a tyrosine molecule, okay? And that hormone is called thyroxine. This is the main thing that our, our thyroid produces. It also produces a little bit of our active hormone. And they say, whoa, whoa, wait, doc, what do you mean? T4 has to convert to T3 in our tissues. Now let me say that again. A little bit of T3 is produced, and that's some of our active hormone, but T4 is the majority of it is inactive. It converts in your tissues to the active form. Once again, the Swiss watch. A thyroid can produce significant amount of hormone, but there's other organ problems that can't convert to its active form. Now, you say, Doc, wait. The T is actually tyrosine. The 4 is iodine. So let me ask you a question, ladies. How important do you think that iodine is for your thyroid? Immensely. Now, the iodine is used by three major organs of the body. It's used in almost every cell, but three major organs. Number one, the thyroid. Number two, the ovaries. And number three, the breast tissue. So when you actually, for example, can't even have enough iodine in our body to actually produce thyroid hormone, good luck doing it for your breast tissue. Good luck doing it for your ovaries. Now, if you lack iodine in your breast tissue, you'll get something called fibrocystic breast disease. Just Google it. Google fibrocystic breast disease and iodine. One of the easiest ways to clear that up is giving a woman whole food iodine. That's why one of my favorite products, whenever I deal with a woman, this is one of the staple products I'd love to give them. Excuse me for a second. <coughs> Sorry about that. But what happens is this. As you can see, for example, this is your whole food iodine that gives the substrate to your body needs. This is the carpenter thing, meaning what? This is the raw materials, ladies, that you need in order to rebuild that system. Okay? Now, see, think about that. How many of you ladies here have been told that you need specific things for your hormones to build? Very little of you guys, okay, if any of you guys. Now, this is one of the very stable products that way. It's very good. It's a whole food-based iron with tyrosine that way. Now, I would put this up for thyroid function because I want you to picture one thing. As you can see here, the brain tells the thyroid to work. The thyroid produces, as you can see, a majority of your thyroid hormone is T4, and it goes to the liver. Uh-oh, wait, 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 wait. So as you saw in our original hormone endocrine organ picture, you saw a liver on there. Why? Because it converts hormones into its active form. It even converts our estrogen and progesterone into active forms. So as you can see here is this. If you have a liver problem, could that affect your hormone levels? Yes, it can. Now, once again, what are three things that are stressors? Trauma, toxins, and thoughts. What is the major organ that deals with toxicity? Our liver. So let me ask you a question, ladies. Can eating bad affect our hormone levels? Yes, because if we eat something that's toxic, it causes our liver to dysfunction, and now what do we do? We cause bad hormone conversions that way. So all I want you to do once again is get the principle that, listen, if you look and find the appropriate doctor that finds, okay, and oh, listen, I got to test these people appropriately to see if what's going on, what organ system is bad, what gear is not spinning right. Now, that's why when a person just tests the hormone levels for the thyroid itself, TSH, T4, T3, free T4, free T3, if they just test the hormones alone, that's an incomplete test. They say, Doc, why is that an incomplete test? It's incomplete because, listen, you never tested the other organ systems that can affect the thyroid. Let me give you an example. Okay? Now watch. As you can see, as you see the brain, the pituitary, those, those are the two glands right there in the brain, they produce T4. T4 now has to convert with a little enzyme called 5 d iodinase which comes from selenium. Guys, can everybody tell me what some of the food sources? Now, once again, here's a good thing. What are some of the food sources that are good for your thyroid? Yes, kelp like for iodine, Brazil nuts for walnuts, Brazil nuts, walnuts, they all have selenium in there. And don't worry, you'll get a list of these good healthy foods that help support the organs. So when you look at, for example, if I'm doctoring a person, I may have to use certain herbals, extracts, glandulars, and stuff like that to help them repair to get them back to normal. But what you really want to do is you want to work very diligently on the food sources to help maintain those organs. Now, whoa, whoa, wait. Let me say that again. You may need some treatment care using the things to rebuild the house. But how you maintain this function long term is by your foods. That's significant, guys. Because if you don't know how to do your foods properly, you can never keep long-term health. Now, here's something that's quite interesting. Look at this person. Okay? Now, this was lab work that was done. Now, if you look, look at her diagnosis up here. 
up here. Now let me use my little point here. Her diagnosis, female infertility. Now, once again, measured the T4 levels. T4 levels were, no, were normal. Okay, so the thyroid was making normal amounts of hormone. But guess what? When we measured a T3, it was low. Now, why is that significant? Let's go back here. So she was producing thyroid hormone, T4, from her gland, but it wasn't converting. So she either had a deficiency, but that's not the problem, because I know this woman. The problem was what? It can't convert. It stops, it interrupts the conversion of her hormones. Now, guys, what does it? High or low cortisol. There we go. There's that stress hormone again. So, ladies, can stress affect how your thyroid function works? Say yes. Thank you. I heard every one of you guys. Of course it can. But also, too, look at this. Heavy metals. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like mercury, cadmium, and lead. Guys, where do we get mercury from? Ladies, right now, look in the mirror. If you see a silver filling, you're getting mercury in there. So you're telling me, Doc, that that toxicity realm, that stuff that they put in our teeth can actually cause me to actually, actually have bad teeth, female hormone problems? Yes, it can. It stops that function of it. Okay? Guess what? You get a vaccine, guess what it does? Loads you full of stuff. Okay? I actually have many cases, thyroid cases, where, for example, they were triggered by a flu shot. It's very sad, guys. It's very sad because there's so much stuff they do medically that can actually impair the function of our body that way. But that's why you need to find a doctor like us, a doctor that can actually evaluate and find these things that are going on with these people. Now, next part. I want to show you something to this. Now, we don't, we're not going to, this is a very long, extensive discussion. But see, what a lot of people don't know is, for example, now, uh, now this is not the woman Patty I was talking about before, but this is a perfect example. If you look at, for example, you see the free T4 and free T3, your TSH. Now, look at her hormone levels were normal, but the TSH was elevated. But what happens is this. Most thyroid problems are autoimmune problems. And you can look, look what's this. The level should have been less than 35. Guess what happened? This person was 179. Wow, 400% more. The person I had this morning was at 800. Now think about that. What does that mean? That means her immune system was destroying her thyroid. Now think about that. The immune system had an autoimmune attack in destroying her thyroid. So a lady that came in here, guess what happens? They were always testing her TSH, normal, 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 normal. And she was getting frustrated because she was going through all those symptoms of thyroid problems. We tested her autoimmune marker. Now, that's not even a thyroid test. It's an immune test. But the immune system was causing damage to the thyroid. Now, why is that significant? Once again, trying to teach you that, guess what? If you don't look at female hormones from a multi-gear perspective, you'll never totally figure it out. Now, I put this in here, guys, because this is very important. It's very important to understand things that destroy the thyroid, like goitrogens, meaning what? Causes thyroid growth and abnormalities and swelling. Now, when you look at this, you say, Doc, soy. You're right. Soy is not a health food, guys. Soy is very damaging with all the phytoestrogens it has and all the trips and inhibitors and all the things that, for example, cause damage to the thyroid. Now, say you say, Doc, whoa, 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 whoa. I can understand soy, but look what's next. Brussels sprouts and broccoli. No, wait, wait. Now, Durham, my background is in nutrition, guys. Broccoli is one of the best things for you. But what happens is this. Whenever you overload your body with a bunch of certain things, guess what? Cruciferous vegetables can actually dampen thyroid function that way. That's why, for example, Durham, you can be a very healthy vegan. You can. But what happens is a lot of vegans eat just a lot of vegetables. They don't eat a lot of protein and also, to a lot of fatty acid-based vegetable sources that way. So they can overload their body on cruciferous vegetables, which can now downregulate the thyroid. Now, so here's what's really funny. Everybody knows WebMD. Now, look at this. If you look down here at this little slide down here, it says, listen, if you are taking levothyroxine, which is the most common medication gave, given for the thyroid, it says do not eat soy, a soybean or soybean flour. Why? Because it downregulates not only the thyroid, but the medication itself. Now, think about that. It downregulates it. Wow. Yet, how many of you guys out there, if you're taking any thyroid medication for hormone problems, that you've been told, number one, make sure to check your adrenals, like the contraindication said at the last slide, and number two, don't eat soy. Do you see how we're off on our health care? Do you see how we're off on our process of actually figuring things out? Do you see how we're off at actually even understanding your own medications you take? See, this is the sad part, guys. This is what I see all day from people from all over the world. They're actually constantly doing things unknowingly, following the lead of a firefighter, instead of carpenter, okay? And I don't care if this offends any of you guys on here. Well, I, oh, I mean, I do care, but I, mean, I don't care if you don't, under, you don't you know, 
totally gets into your heart. You cannot build a healthy body from drugs and surgery. You do not have too many body parts, and you do not lack medications. Okay? They are there to put up the fire. God bless us. We want them for there. But guess what? All these things that go on, there's so many contraindications. There's so many things that you're not taught that even you're taking a medication can be damaging. Now, what this does now is it leads into another lab value, which is called reverse T3. There's that RT3 that we saw at the beginning. Now, as you can see, I'm going to actually you're going to circle this right here. Reverse T3, unlike T3, does not stimulate the thyroid receptors. Now, guess what? When T3, our active hormone, comes in combination with cortisol, as you can see right here, produced by your adrenals over here, it actually makes it reverse T3. Means what? It deactivated. So once again, can stress affect our adrenal or our thyroid? Yes, it can, because that's why you cannot. As you look back to the last slide we did a little bit ago, with low adrenal gland function, guess what? It affects the thyroid massively. Oh, that's a big one. So here, guys, I put this on there. It's going to be in your notes too. When you actually, this is actually one of my blood work orders. When I test the thyroid, guys, look at all these values we do. See these? These are the things that make a difference. These are things that affect all of your female hormones. These are things that affect your immune system. These affect your GI. These affect your metabolism. They all have a correlation between there. Now, the one thing you guys can do, which is very good, is find a doc, and I, I think chiropractors are best at this, and actually do what? Have an x-ray taken on your neck. Because look it. Yes, you can look for the spinal curves over here because you want to make sure you have a nice curve for nerve function. But see this over here? See this thing right here? It looks like a big old bone in her throat. That's calcification of the thyroid gland that way. That's significant because if there's calcification of the thyroid, it doesn't say up here. There's degeneration. Okay? You do not want your gland degenerating. But also look. Guys, look at this. What does she have loaded in her mouth? A bunch of mercury fillings. A bunch of mercury fillings. Those things actually cause toxicity that will even damage a person's thyroid that way. See, we're, we're, we're unknowingly. Now you say, Doc, well, I got mercury fillings. Do so I go get them taken out? Yeah, you do. You do over time. They put them in, have them take them out. Dentists don't even put them in anymore. Heck, they're illegal in pregnant women and children now. Okay? Well, now I always say, so not good for pregnant women, not good for children, but what about the rest of us? Those are 50, amalgamar, 50% mercury right there. Okay? And that leaks into our system. Now, let's get into two of the primary different female hormones. Okay? Now, these, now guys, listen. You're going to get all these slides in, in a handout format. You're going to get this whole thing, webinar, sent to you. To, and, and guess what? Take it. Send it to other women. Have them listen to this so they can understand these principles for them to have better healthy hormones. But let's take a look at female hormones, and there are two primary ones that are secreted both by the ovaries, estrogen and progesterone. Now, here's one thing, guys. I put this in big red. They have opposite effects. One does one thing. One does the other. They balance out each other, but they have to be balanced. Now, look at Estrogen, it's our queen bee. Estrogen, for example, guess what, guys? It's kind of a misnomer. Estrogen's not even a real hormone. I'm going to explain that in a second. But estrogen's kind of the queen bee. It's kind of the thing that produ you know, it's produced by our ovaries. But where else, guys? Our adrenals. Once again, remember, the adrenals make one-third of our, of, our, of our hormones. So if we do not have good adrenal function, we cannot have good female hormone function. So test number one, guys, how many here, how many women on this phone, how many people listen to this webinar have had their adrenals tested? If they have not, they don't know if they have proper thyroid or if they have proper female hormone production. Now, as you can see here, this, it regulates our menstrual cycle, promotes cell division. You say, what do you mean personal cell division? That nice endometrial liner that you have to produce every month to get that uterus prepped comes from estrogen. It is largely responsible for the development of our secondary female characteristics during puberty, including growth development or breast. It causes the uterus and vaginal vagina to increase in size. So when you actually do what? When you actually get your cycle as a young girl, guess what happens? Look at here. During puberty, it, per, it increases 20-fold. Now think about that. That means, for example, guess what? It elevates very quickly. That means 20 times that goes up, and all these sex characteristics come to us that way. That's why women, for example, you start to develop breasts. That's why women, you start to actually do what? Have emotional changes, have body changes, start to get curves like you're supposed to that way. Now, but here's the thing, guys. Estrogen is really a general term. It's not really a hormone. The three major hormones that convert into other metabolites, the three majors are what? Esterone, estradiol, and estriol. Let me say that again. The three major estrogens are estrone, estradiol, and estriol. See, you can't put on a lab test estrogen 
because it, there's not that's not a hormone. That's really a term for these three major hormones, which what I'm going to show you convert to even more estrogens. So there's really between nine and twelve of them. So when you look at this, I just put these on there to find them for you and tell you what they do. But we want to go on a little farther. Now here's one thing. Once again, let's read the top part. How diet, stress, and the environment affect estrogen levels. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me say that again. Let's go back to this. Trauma, toxins, and thoughts. You hear what I'm saying? When you decrease your fatty acids, now think about this. this. A decrease in your essential fatty acids will decrease what? Progesterone, or excuse me, decrease estrogen. DES, guys, diethylstilbestrol, contains estrogen and is used as a day after birth control. And it's fed to livestock to fatten them up. Whoa, 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 doc, hold the phone here. Wait, wait, wait. You're telling me that the, a non-organic cow is fed DES. Yes, it is, guys. That's what makes them nice and plump. Is a cow, ladies, sold for its good quality meat? No, it's sold by the pound. Do you follow me on that? It's sold by the pound. So the fatter they make these, the more money they make. So they stick hormones into them. Okay. Now, when we eat that livestock, when we eat that cow, guess what we get? That DES. And that makes us a bigger cow. Okay. Plastics. Guys in my house, no joke, I do not have plastics. I am against plastics. Plastics can contain estrogen derivatives. Okay. So when you're drinking your – here, one thing. Doc, I love my bottled water. Good. You're drinking estrogen water. Why? Because it's mainly out of plastic. I only drink spring water from what? From a glass bottle. Guess what? They have them at the grocery store. But, Doc, it's a little bit more expensive. No, hormone problems are expensive. Spend a little extra couple pennies to actually get that done. Now, stress. Here we go, guys. Stress can decrease progesterone levels and cause estrogen dominant symptoms. Wait, wait, wait. So when progesterone drops, even if estrogen is normal, because they balance themselves out, guess what happens? It perceives as more estrogen in the body. Now, let's go on. I love this, guys. Guys, I love research. Now, when we talked about estrogen levels actually going up, it gives you actually different characteristics. And so they did this wonderful study back in 2008 that says, our lipstick chemicals change your breast size. Why? Because women were going from B cups to C cups from stuff they were putting on their lips. Meaning what? Lipstick, guys, cosmetics. Cosmetics have a lot of estrogens in there. They can cause a lot of cancers. Now think about that. Because they use it as a binding agent. Estrogens do a wonderful job in cosmetics as a binding agent. So what they do? They put it in, our, in your cosmetics. Whoa, Doc, you're telling me that, for example, when I put something from outside of my skin, it can affect my hormone levels? Yes, it can. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you ever heard that from an OB? Okay? See, that's one thing, guys. When you just deal with the fire department to deal with your hormones, they're never going to find the true causal issues and actually teach you how not to do these things. Second thing, here's some wonderful common estrogen dominant conditions. PMS, endometriosis, fibrocystic breast disease, all of these. Look over here, guys. What's this you see over here? The big pink ribbon. Breast cancers, guys. The only known cause of breast cancer is excess estrogen. But let me say, you say, but doc, don't we need estrogen? Yes, we do. But here's the thing. I'm going to go a little bit more detail into it. Excess estrogen also causes all these things. Now, once again, these will be in your, in your list, so I want you to look those over. Now, here's things that cause estrogen dominance. Once again, number one, commercially raised cattle, fruits with DDT, exposures to xenoestrogens like plastics, industrial solvents like peeing products, hormone replacement therapy, that horse urine, overproduction estrogen, once again, stress, obesity. Okay, but let's even go down here. What's number 14, guys? Soy. Do you see what I'm saying? That's why, you guys, one of the major reasons you don't want to only think. We say, Doc, what if I'm low in estrogen? The last thing you still want to do is put soy in because not only does it have phytoestrogens, it also has other chemicals and processing and artificial sweeteners and glutamate and all the things in there that cause damage to other organs of our body. So stay away from it, guys. It's bad for you. Now, here's the one thing I really love, bisphenol A. This coats the metals on the inside of tin cans, like our sodas, like our canned soups, like like all those Campbell soups and stuff like that. Once again, dental sealants, dental composites, that's why we stay away from that stuff. That's why we don't like mercury fillings because not only does it have toxicity in there, it also does what? It also has a lot of other components like this phenyl A in there. Guess what, guys? They did a wonderful study, and I should say a disgusting study, baby bottles. Baby bottles have a ton of actual what? This phenyl A. That's why we don't drink out of plastics. So when you're feeding your baby soy formula 
out of a plastic bottle, you just create more estrogen-dominant female hormone problems for them later in life. They say, Doc, that, that's kind of scary. Yeah, but look at guys. Look at how many female hormone problems we have nowadays. And it starts with all these things put together. Now, one thing I want you to understand is this. Let's start putting not only the things that actually help balance, for example, our hormone levels out, like hemp. Okay. Now, I'm just gonna, I just put these in your notes for some good hormone balancing things that way. Hemp has all the fatty acids that we need to build proper hormone levels. Guess what else it does? Maca. Maca actually even known is as the female hormone aphrodisiac that way. Why? Gives the essential fatty acids, proteins, and polysaccharides to produce hormone levels. So those are very important to them. Now, this is a very important slide, okay? Because what I want to show you is this. When you look at this slide, and I put this up there because I knew there's some women on here that are suffering from breast cancer. So they wanted me to talk a little bit about it. Now, as you can see, these hormones convert. See, there's your estradiol, converts to estrone, but also converts to other estrogens, like I told you. Even the three I showed you before, guess what happens? They convert to weaker forms and stronger forms. Now, this is a very, once again, a weak form, 2-hydroxyesterone. This right here, guys, I want you to do a homework for me. 16-alpha-hydroxyesterone. This is the number one cause of all breast cancer right here. This is the number one cause. Now, what happens is when the hormones convert and if these metabolites get stuck in this form, guess what happens? They'll start to build up, and this is what causes breast cancer. Now, these are all measurable. I measure these constantly in women. Actually, today, just uh, Mary Beth was in. We just actually gave her her test for that. She's actually, now get this, on Friday, this is not a joke, she's having a lump, a breast cancer lump, true metastatic breast cancer, a move from her breast tissue on Friday. I encourage that. You say, well, Doc, why would you encourage it? Because she's got the lump. Use the fire department. Rip it out. She doesn't have to have breast reconstruction. They're going to rip out that one lymph node that has this. But guess what? They never talk to her about measuring her hormone levels. Why? Because they just deal with the end result. So now we're, we gave her this test, and it's a simple urine test. It's the easiest way to measure it. Now, there's one point I want you to take away from here. Can anybody tell me where all of our estrogens convert in our body? Our liver, guys. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you're telling me that a toxic liver can actually eventually lead to breast cancer. Yes, it can. Because if those hormones can't convert and get away from 16 alpha hydroxyesterone, it will build up in our system and then we'll start traveling our bloodstream and that will cause metastatic breast cancer that way. Okay? That's very significant, guys. So remember, pink ribbons to me. Like I said, when I look at this, when I look at this here and I see pink ribbons, pink ribbons to me, guys, is not prevention. Pink ribbons are this. I've got hormone problems, and now I'm going to deal with it. That's not prevention. This is prevention, guys. When you look at this, when you look at this whole ovarian and menstrual cycle, guess what? And we start measuring all these hormones to see if this cycle is normal. Look at this pattern down here. Estrogen starts out a little higher than progesterone because it balances it out, peaks up, and goes down. Progesterone dominates in the second half of the cycle. Now, what I want to show you guys is this. Here's our model. We don't guess. We test. So I'm sorry for running a little bit over. I'm right now about five minutes over. But can you about another three minutes that way? Okay. Here's a hormone test we do. It's called an expanded female hormone panel. See this down here, guys? We run a test on a woman for 30 days. Here's estrogen. Here's progesterone. See how it's nice and normal just as we go back to here? See how the estrogen spikes up and comes down? Progesterone in the green comes up later. It comes down. This is what happens. This was a female hormone that we measured on here. Okay, see how that pattern was very nice? Now let's look at this next one. Here was a woman. Look at progesterone did the same thing. It did well. Look at her estrogen, way high. This woman, for example, was suffering from what? Female hormone problems. Does that make sense? Estrogen dominant problems. This woman had fibrocystic breast disease. This woman had endometriosis. This woman would eventually develop cancer. But what we did, because why? It doesn't look like it's normal female hormone pattern. Now, let me ask you a question, ladies. I believe that this test should be done at least once every couple of years in every woman. How many of you guys have actually had your whole female hormone cycle mapped out for one month? Oops. You follow me? See, they don't even check proper hormone function because they don't even map it for the full 30 days. See, we, we can map our adrenals in a day and figure out what's going on. But we really need to map our hormones if we're premenopausal. Have you ever been to a movie before? that you went to because you saw the preview on TV, you watched the preview and go, man, that looks like a great movie. You went to the full movie, the full two-hour one, and it sucked. You can never tell from one simple clip on TV what the full movie is like. 
So when they just measure your hormone levels for one sample, they have no idea what this whole cyclic pattern. As you can see right here, guys, ladies, excuse me, you menstruate for a certain amount of days, from 26 to 32 days, okay? It varies on each woman. But here's what happens. Have they ever, have any of you guys ever had that measured? Have any of you guys had a proper adrenal test? Have any of you guys had a proper adrenal test or thyroid test? Have any of you guys had it mapped out your full female hormone cycle? See, right now, guess what? A lot of times we want to know, Doc, what can I take? What can I do? But here's the thing I want you to understand. If you don't have the proper testing, guess what? What direction do we go in? How can we create a roadmap without the proper testing? So, ladies, I want to take in your heart on this. Two things I really want you to take away. If you don't understand or look at the body from a Swiss watch standpoint of understanding that all these gears interact, but then second of all, and don't test them properly, how can we ever figure out female hormone health? It's scary, isn't it? I have three beautiful daughters and a wonderful wife. Why, for example, I test my wife. I test my kids constantly. Why? Because I want to make sure that I keep their normal physiology, that all those gears are spinning the way they're supposed to. Okay? Now, what we can do during these things to clear out some of those bad estrogens, here's the big thing. Remember, estrogens are metabolizing the liver. That's why if we methylate or detox them, it does very well. Berries are a really good way of removing bad estrogens. Citrus peels. Guys, guess what? Christmas is coming up. Stop peeling your oranges. Grind your oranges up and use that. Cruciferous vegetables. Melatonin. Iodine. Once again, there's that thyroid adrenal. Indol 3 carbonyl, all these things are great estrogen removers. Now, it's kind of funny. When you look at that, I want to, I actually, let me just jump back to this slide right here. Sorry, because I know you guys go a little slower in the computer than I do. When this converts to these bad estrogens, that for example, what happens, our body produces enzymes, produces hormones called aromatase inhibitors, okay? And it stops these major bad en uh, metabolic enzymes, or excuse me, hormones from producing. Here are your natural aromatase inhibitors. Look at this. The major drug used right now today is Femura, okay? These are the drugs they use for aromatase inhibitors. Here's your natural ones, guys. Olive oil. Women, you guys got to be pounding this down orally. Even if you just take a shot of it daily. Wonderful way to keep you from getting breast cancers. Wonderful way to keep you from getting bad hormone problems. Guys, nettle root, okay? Women, resveratrol. Yes, ladies, guess what? Get some good organic wine. Woohoo! Dr. Patrick's telling you to drink. <laughs> no, I don't drink any alcohol, guys, but I just had to put that in there. But yes, grapes too. Fermented grapes as wine does. But guess what? Resveratrol is wonderful. Chamomile, passion flower, all these can come in good teas, or if you really need treatment, then they can get from a good doctor all the medicinal forms of it that way. Okay, wonderful things that stop our body from doing what? Producing those bad and bad hormones for breast cancer in that. Here's some good natural hormone builders. These will be in your notes. Kelp, maca, cacao, chocolate, hemp. Wait, wait, back up, Doc. You said chocolate. Yes, cacao. Cacao is one of the great natural hormone builders. Guess what? Chaseberry, bee pollen, colostrum, deer antler. Oh, Doc, deer antler? Yes, we'll talk about that in another webinar. But all these things do a wonderful job of natural building hormones. Here's great herbal hormone builder that way, okay? Now, once again, guys, when you look at these lists here, okay, what I want you to understand don't just look at these and go get a bunch of these. The food source is yes, but don't run out and buy a bunch of passion flour or chamomile. Don't go out and buy a bunch of tribulus, okay? Don't go out and buy a bunch of don quai and ginseng and things like that. Why? Because the only way you really know what you need is what is the Wellness Ways model. Every one of our offices all over the country stand for what? We don't guess, we test. So ladies, what I want to do is this. I hope you got the concept that which I wanted to accomplish tonight, which is what? Here's what happens to us from a female hand standpoint, the way to look at healthcare a little bit differently. What hormones do in our body? How they're affected? What happens when they get thrown off? And a couple of those natural remedies that we can do to create a little bit of balance. What we're going to do on our next webinar, once again, which will be a part two, okay? Once again, which will be, this is a, a great webinar to get you started to think properly, use some things, get tested properly that way. What we'll do is we'll go a little bit more detail into those other hormones from the female hormone aspect, and I'll give you a little bit more here, okay? Now, here's the one thing. 
for example, if any of you guys want to be tested, for example, you just got to get the test kits and get those done. As you can see, for example, once again, you want to be able to do certain tests as a female on a year or every year, uh, every other year basis that way. Okay, even just mapping out that hormone cycle. Now, if you're menopausal, there's other tests that are supposed to be done. You, you can measure your hormones at one time and get the snapshot for the whole hormone levels. You don't have to do it 30 days that way. But what I want you guys to understand is this. Let's properly get you tested. Let's properly understand how hormones work. Let's make sure that all these things start to balance up properly so you can live good vitality, good hormone health, good growth and repair, and good psychiatric processes that way. Okay? Now, once again, thank you so much for letting me go a little bit over. Okay? Now, once again, guys, if you have any questions, you know, um, email us. Email us at the wellness way. You can go to our link and actually email us if you have any questions. I'm going to, once again, now we're going to, this is recorded. This will be, for example, everybody that was on the webinar or even signed up for the webinar, even if you're not on now. So hi to all of you guys that are listening to this later that you can get live. Okay? The one thing is this. It will be sent to you, and also, too, we're going to send the notes to you that way. So you can actually print them out while you're listening to it again and kind of look at them. Guys, take this information and give it to everybody. Take the handles, give it to everybody. Why? Because we've got to teach people a little bit different. Hormone health is at an all-time bad for males and females. Guess what? We have to step up and start teaching everybody. So, what, guys, thank you so much for being on the webinar. What I want you to see is this. This is the wellness way. What's our model right there, guys? We don't guess, we test. There's many websites and stuff that you can go to, like drpatrickflynn.com or certain products on there. You can go to the wellnesswayclinics.com. Sorry, this is my old email address, but you do type that in. You'll get to the same website that way. And it links us to our YouTube channel. I love doing webinars, and I love doing live videos. So what's going to happen is this. When you go there, you're going to learn more things on there. I'm always going to put these things online. This, this webinar will go on my, on my website, and then you'll be able to reference to it that way. You'll be able to download it again. Let's say you lose the email that we send you. They're all going to be on there. So look at our, our materials. Look at our YouTube channel. Find out there's more things that you can learn on there, okay, because there's wonderful ways of actually finding out what's going on with you. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for attending my webinar. Watch, uh, friend us on Facebook, guys, because we post a lot of stuff on there, okay? Follow us on Twitter because we post a lot of things where you can follow all their seminars that we get. So once again, ladies, thank you so much for being on. This is Dr. Patrick Flynn from the Wallace Way. Thank you from the bottom of my heart covering one of the most, most important topics that I've ever done, which is female health. God bless you. Have a great night.